These are four movement habits that everybody needs regardless of lifestyle or what they do in their fitness. The first one is going to be making sure they get 7,500 steps in per day minimum. We've all heard that you should get 10,000 steps in per day, but as it turns out, uh, as long as we hit 7,500, we're pretty good to go. Once we pass that, sure, there are still going to be benefits that we gain, but it's not as a significant difference from when we go from you know, less than 7,500 to finally hitting 7,500. And that's why we really want to make sure that we're getting as much walking in per day as possible. Not only that, but just as I'm outside now, people walk outdoors. So it's a great way to automatically begin getting sunlight on your skin, sunlight on your eyes to help set your circadian rhythm. Andrew Huberman talks about this a lot. Um, in addition to that, you're usually walking with someone. So that social interaction is going to be really, really good. Um, and notice how a lot of times we stare at a screen. That's like a very focused position with our eyes, the same way when we stare at a TV. It's very, very focused. It's very narrow. And that's going to relate to our nervous system in a way that's a little bit more, uh, we'll say, prey or predatory. There are aspects of our health and wellness that help us calm down when we have more of a panoramic view. Think about when you're in nature. It's not only the setting. Things that are also different is how you're viewing what's around you. Total view of everything versus very pinpoint and narrow. So uh, all of these types of things happen when we're outside getting our steps in. So that's why we're going to get 7,500 steps in minimum for our first movement habit. Our second movement habit that we have is making sure that we change our resting positions. I'm not actually sitting in like a chair right now, like a traditional chair. It's a very, very low seat. I'm in more of like a squat based position. And when we spend time six to eight hours of our day, just sitting, just standing with a little bit of walking in between, that really can start to destroy our body when we go want to move in the gym or for whatever our sport is, because our body gets really good at sitting or really good at standing and it becomes not very good at moving. Just think about it like this, you only spend maybe 60 minutes to 90 minutes in the gym or doing your sport versus hours and hours and hours of sitting. So when we adopt different resting positions, what does that actually mean? Well. It means that we're sitting in natural positions that would be like a shin kneeling position that you would see in yoga, a half kneeling resting position. You can make sure that you're resting in the bottom of the squat. You can be lying on your back like a baby does. But adopting these positions that you usually see children or infants rest in, it'll do the same benefit for you as it did for them as far as helping them stay supple. supple. Obviously, their age is a factor, but not only that, making sure that their joints start to get used to being in those positions. Case in point, it shouldn't hurt to put your knees on the ground and maybe crawl around a little bit. The third one is getting barefoot. I love companies like Vivo Barefoot, Earth Runners. There's so many more out there. Foot should be free to do what it's able to do on its own, the function of it naturally. When we start to add cushioning to a shoe, thickening it and making our foot come further away from the ground, when we start to raise the toe spring up, narrow the toe box, or not have a solid heel attachment in the case, case of flip-flops, what ends up happening is we take away from the natural function that can happen with the foot on its own. So a toe spring limits our toe off and does it for us and leads to things like plantar, plantar fasciitis. The disconnect from the foot to the ground because of all of the foam or plastic or air between our foot and the ground makes it harder for us to be aware of where our foot is in space. So we actually end up striking the ground harder. A narrow toe box crushes and brings the toes together. And what that does is it prevents our feet from moving and strengthening itself. And the arch support in a shoe weakens the arch. Think about it. An arch is strongest when gravity is pressing down from the top, not from something pressing up from the bottom. That's when an arch is its weakest. When you begin to add a barefoot shoe, it helps strengthen your foot and to have a better sense of where you are in space. What you feel firing up the chain towards the torso is different and it'll totally change your perception of movement. And that's why you're gonna wanna have barefoot shoes and walking around more barefoot as your third movement habit. The fourth and final movement habit that everybody wants uh, is getting in what we call movement snacks. Doing short bits of movement repetitively throughout your day. We're not made to just sit or stand or do one repetitive task over and over and over again for hours on end until the end of the day. Regardless of what your work is, there can always be a movement snap to fit each situation and each uh, attire that a person is wearing, right? Wearing a suit or wearing a dress is different from wearing athletic clothes like I get to wear when I go to work. Here's an example of different movement snacks. It could be as simple as do 10 air squats, do 10 toe touches, do 10 arm swings, do two rounds of that, you're, un you're done in under 45 seconds, 
And you do that every time that you decide to walk through a doorway at your work, right? Like you do that next to your desk. Uh, you do that when you get out of your car. You do it every half hour. Well, all of a sudden, those 30 reps that you did in under 45 seconds really start to add up. You're moving a lot more frequently throughout the day. This can help so much for people that have to sit all day uh, staring at a computer screen. It can help for people that have to stand all day. And if you really want to feel better going to the gym, doing that is going to make a big difference. Think about it. If you spent all day sitting and then went to go run and back squat versus part of the day sitting, part of the day having spent uh, walking, getting those 7,500 steps in, and then part of the day implementing different movement snacks, well, that's a complete difference. When you adopt all four of these movement snacks, which again, they are making sure we get 7,500 steps in per day, it's making sure that we adopt barefoot shoes, it's making sure that we change our resting positions, and it's making sure that we get movement snacks in, or those little mini workouts, micro workouts, it's going to dramatically change the events that happen throughout your day, which is to say your habits. And when those habits change and we adopt a more movement-based lifestyle, then it becomes easier and easier to move well, to move pain-free, to adopt the different things we want to do when it comes to our health and wellness and longevity. If you guys are interested, you can sign up for the Kalo app. Go ahead and use code FYDM for 50% off your first month. And we actually have flexibility in there, mobility in there. We have uh, breath work. We have meditation. We have yoga. We have some of the Feel Your Damn Muscle Flows that I host. Um, and that'll begin to help you guys utilize these four movement habits that you're trying to adopt better. So again, you can head over to the below uh, and go ahead and type in code FYDM for 50% of your first month. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.